Edmund Burke once wrote and said, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is for that good men to do nothing. In the endless battle between good and evil, it's seldom that numbers determine the outcome of the battles. All the way through the scriptures, we see that I emphasize by God. It doesn't really matter how many. That's what the story of Gideon and his army is about. And you look at many of the other ones, it doesn't matter who has the greatest numbers. Many times, the side for right has been overwhelming odds. But more often, evil wins simply because good men are not willing to stand up and fight for what they know is right. See, when good men do nothing, well then, then nothing good gets done. To be good, one has to be or do good things. That's part of what we mean when we say somebody is a good person. They actually do good things. Take a look at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6 and in verse 35. Luke 6 verse 35. But love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you'll be sons of the Most High for he himself is kind to the ungrateful and evil men. Good people need to do good. Not because they're going to get something out of it or not because somebody's going to give them something in return. But for the simple fact it is the right thing to do. Over in Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God expects us to do good. God laid out in his word the things that we ought to do. And he expects us to do those things. That's what we were created to do. Over in Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 and in verse 14. Talking about Jesus Christ our Savior. says who gave himself for us that, we might re that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his own possession zealous for good deeds. Zealous means to be on fire. People who are eager to do good. In fact, we have a parable that we often talk about. The parable of the man who had only one talent. There was a parable of the talent that is in Matthew chapter 25. One of those men was given just one talent. And when he was given that one talent in Matthew 25 and verse 18, it says, But he who received the one talent went away and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. What did he do with what the Lord gave him? Nothing. And that is actually the point. Because when he, the master returned and he returned what the master gave to him, he was condemned. Down in verse 25 of that same parable. Matthew 25, verse 25, it says, And I was afraid and went away and hid your talent in the ground and see you have what, you, what is yours. But his master answered and said, You wicked, lazy slave, 
You knew that I reap where I did not sow and, and gather where I did not scatter seed. Then you ought to have uh, put my money in the bank. And upon my arrival, I would have received my money back with interest. He was lazy. He was slothful. He didn't do what was expected of him. He knew it. His own words accused him of knowing what he was supposed to have done. But notice he didn't do any outright evil. He didn't go and take that master's money and go out and blow it. Or was frivolous in any way with it. He didn't do any evil with what he was given. He didn't steal the money. The point is he didn't do anything good with what he had either. He did nothing. There was a church in Sardis in Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3 in, in verse 1 it says, And the angel and to the angel of the church in Sardis write, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deed, that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. You have a reputation for doing what is right, but you don't. Too many churches and far too many Christians do nothing. They stand idly by. They're mere spectators. Sitting on the sidelines instead of actively participating in good deeds, in good works. Oh, they might show up at church once in a while, but they don't do what God wants them to do. They did nothing to produce victory. In fact, as good wins, they join in the celebration, but they didn't bring about victory. They didn't help. If evil wins and they complain loud and long, even though there was their own apathy to help produce the problem. There's another parable back in Matthew, Matthew 21. It talks about a fig tree dying. Matthew 21 and verse 19. Matthew 21 verse 19. It says, And seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves only. And he said to it, No longer shall there ever be any fruit from you. And at once the tree withered. The point of that uh, parable is that when you plant a fig tree, you expect to get figs off of it. I plant tomato bushes. I'm expecting to get some tomatoes off of it. When God plants Christians, he's expecting produce. What will the great judge do with those who claim to be good and yet do nothing? There are Jews who approach John and he gave them warning basically on that same level because the Jews were supposed to be God's people. And back in Matthew chapter 3 and in verse 10, he tells them the axe is already laid at the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. He says, you don't realize the peril that you're in. God's already got out the axe. It's already being swung at the, uh, the root of the trees. If you don't produce good fruit, you're going to be cut down. Jesus gave the same warning in John chapter 15. John chapter 15, starting with verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it, that it may bear more fruit. Every branch that doesn't produce fruit is, is removed. Why? A branch that does nothing is no good. I 
I keep wondering how many Christians think they're going to get to heaven doing nothing. It won't work. 